Let's talk money. Welcome back. You're with us on Let's Talk Money. And this week, we are talking about the shiny, glittery, yellow metal called gold, which is hitting new records in terms of the price action. The question is whether you have adequate exposure to gold in your portfolio or not. So, Vishal, we have some more questions coming in. I want to sort of straight away get to them. Uh, Nidhi has a query. I think she's on the phone line with us. Nidhi, hi. Welcome to the show. Tell us, how can we help you? Hi, my name is Nidhi. I want to relocate to another country and have some quantity of physical gold. I want to liquidate it and turn it into virtual gold. What is the best option? Okay, uh, Nidhi, thanks for that question. Uh, that's an interesting question, actually, you know, because uh, if we just look at it, sometimes there's a lot of you know, jewelry or other forms of gold which is lying unused, not even being consumed, and it's just lying there. Uh, so, what would you advise? A, is it is it good to convert that into you know a financial form of gold, and then if yes, then what form? Which financial form? Yeah, I think it's a there's a plethora of choices now, so it's mm -hmm. a good place to be in. So, I think one of the options is clearly to look at ETFs or gold funds. Uh, the advantage clearly there is that it's regulated, and I think this was a sort of missing link in the gold industry. You were always unsure about purity. You wanted to go to a jeweler who you know, because you were like not sure whether you'll get stuff that you wanted, etc. Now that you have the ETF option available, you can buy small quantities, you can hold it electronically, you don't have to worry about transport, you don't have to worry about customs duty, none of that. As an investor, I think it's a great option. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, you can buy the ETF domestically, mm -hmm. or once you go overseas, you can buy it internationally as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other option is to, of course, you know, look at sovereign gold bonds. And I think it's very interesting to look at sovereign gold bonds. This as a product didn't exist a few years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a product that's come in, regulated by RBI. Mm -hmm. The beauty of the sovereign gold bond is that it is available giving you some interest. 2.5% a year, paid two times a year. A lot of times people say, hey, 2.5% is nothing, right? But the fact of the matter is that people buy houses which they rent out, mm -hmm. on which they earn 2.5% a year rental as well. Rental yields, yeah. That's what rental yields are about. Yeah. So suddenly, gold lying in your locker mm -hmm or in some account somewhere, which earned you zero, now starts to earn you 2.5%. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a great option. Mm -hmm. I think for Nidhi, the challenge is going to be that she can only do that while she's a resident. Mm -hmm. Once she becomes non-resident, not possible to buy a sovereign gold bond. Mm -hmm. She has to be comfortable with the lock-in that comes with it. Because there's there's an, an eight-year lock-in, There's right? an eight-year lock-in. I mean, there is On liquidity after five years. Okay. But typically, the tenure is eight years. Okay. And uh, the advantage, of course, is that you know it's sort of backed by the RBI. Mm -hmm. So you feel comfortable. I think there's one element of risk which always exists with any product that has got a particular tenure, mm -hmm. which is that you can't control what the price will be at the end of the eighth year. Sure, sure. And you don't know, you know whether it's going to be up, down, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. let's say you have a bad period for gold. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly OK to take that money and buy another gold bond again. Right. Because at the end of the day, then you're sort of buying at those lower prices at that point. And there is no capital gains tax as well, right, on, on yes. these bonds? Yes, so the beauty about yeah. Uh, sovereign gold bonds is if you hold to maturity, mm -hmm. no capital gains bonds. So very, very tax efficient. So interest is taxable, but the capital gains are not. Okay. And that makes it very, very efficient as an option. Okay, so that's sovereign gold bonds. Just to go back to the gold funds for a bit. So there are gold ETFs where you'll need a DMAT account. Then there are mutual funds that invest in gold where you don't need to have a DMAT account. You're not really trading on the exchange. Uh, so the, the pros and cons and also a little bit about uh, the, the cost involved. The expense ratios, et cetera, I mean, right, and taxation, right. et cetera. Sure, 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 sure. So the advantage of the uh, gold fund is essentially that, you know, a lot of people want to buy in a staggered manner, right? Like we were just discussing. Yeah. Now, gold funds make that very easy because you can set up a systematic investment plan. You can set up a systematic transfer plan from a liquid fund. Mm -hmm. So you have all that flexibility built in, which mm -hmm. an ETF may not provide because it depends on the platform that you're working with mm -hmm. on whether it allows an SIP sort of structure. Uh, the disadvantage on a gold fund is that you now end up having a little extra cost to pay. So typically, mm. if you look at a gold ETF, the expense ratios are about 0.5% per annum. Mm. That's the cost that you pay for all that benefit that you get, purity, mm. you know, no storage issues, all of those things. Yeah. Uh, a gold fund would probably have an extra cost on top of that, which is on an average about 0.4% per annum extra. Mm. So I think the way to look at it is roughly 0.8% per annum to 1% per annum is what you give up to get the flexibility of being able to buy SIPs, STPs, et cetera, and also not worry about liquidity at all. Because if you decide to sell a gold mutual fund, you will sell it back to the mutual fund itself. Mm. And therefore, you will get your money uh, you mm. know, by default, mm. because mutual fund will create the liquidity for you. 
just whether one, it's available or not. Just one more quick point before we move to the next question. Nidhi's question was also on liquidating current physical holdings. Mm. So apart from going and selling it in the market to a jeweler, I remember there used to be this uh, gold monetization scheme as well. I mean, is there any efficient way of getting rid of your physical holdings and then using that cash to enter one of these products? So I think, uh, you know, the gold monetization scheme is really like, you know, not... I think the most efficient instrument to use for what she's seeking. Okay. I think it has a different role to play. Mm -hmm. But I think for her, probably liquidation is going to be the answer. Okay. Uh, especially if she's going to go there, be there long term. Okay. Uh, you know, you need physical storage to be there. Sure. I mean, you're like bank lockers. Sure. Maybe much easier to get in India than they are in other parts of the world. So where do you store the gold? Where mm -hmm. do you store the ornaments? What do you do? You pass in through customs on both sides. You have to deal with all of that. So mm -hmm. I think it's very practical saying that, hey, a part of this maybe is family heirlooms, you know, I, I never want to let go of it. I want to pass it on to the next generation. But I think anything which is outside of that, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense to convert it. Mm -hmm. You need to go out. Unfortunately, there's no way to do it but to sell it back to a jeweler. Yeah. But, you know, once it's done, and, mm -hmm. you know, assuming that gold is going to continue to grow over the next many years. Sure. Uh, you've done it once, and then after that, you can be in the, in the financial world with gold. Got it, got it. Okay, time for just one last question on the show. Uh, Ayush is with us on the phone line. Ayush, thank you for uh, dialing in. Tell us, what's your query? So, hi, this is Ayush, and I just wanted to understand with the recent uh, volatility attached to the equity market, even despite the bullish run, that what would be the prospect of understanding a return of maybe a 2x in the gold investment, and what is the time period uh, we should look at? Okay, so Ayush, uh, you want a 2x return. Now, given the rate at which things are going, uh, God knows. But typically, I don't know, I haven't run the numbers or the math on this. But, uh, you know, in how much time can gold double your, your gold investment? So, I think you need to look at gold from a longer term perspective. It is mm. typically your hedge against inflation. Mm. Uh, it tends to follow inflation trends very closely over long periods of time. Uh, the RBI works with a 6% upper sort of limit on inflation. Mm. Um, Maybe, you know, your own lifestyle will probably have it go up by another 2%, so inflation's at 8%. So if your inflation rates are between 6 and 8% mm -hmm. over long periods, in, you know, you should expect that gold will also end up tracking that. Okay. And if that ends up happening, then your money will typically double over 9 to 12 years. I think okay. that's the way to think about gold. I mean, of course, if it doubles quicker, great news, but... So you assume an 8% rate of, uh, you know, uh, price appreciation every year? And then you can expect your gold investment to double in about nine, nine years. Nine, nine years right. approximately. Nine years or so, that's right. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So that's a rough math for you to work with. Finally, you know, uh, we didn't discuss one, one last product and that is digital gold, which really hit the scene some time back where you could invest for as little as 100 rupees. And, you know, there was this talk about that uh, eventually it will have the backing of physical gold and you can maybe, you know, get physical gold when you want to. What, what did you think of this product and is it advisable to look at it? So I think it's a... Um, it's a place where clearly regulations have not caught up in that space. So mm. both RBI and SEBI don't look at that. So I think investors buying digital gold are exposed to risk mm -hmm. uh, of an sort of unregulated space. Mm -hmm. The advantage clearly there is that, you know, it just is very, very easy to do what you have to do. Mm. Uh, so it's convenient. You can buy very small lots. Yeah. Uh, but there are limits on the upper end. So you cannot buy more than two lakhs across transactions for even the entire day even if you split it across. And you'll end up paying 3% GST as well. Okay. So I think the way to think about that is if you don't want a DMAT account, if you, uh, you know, don't like a gold fund, mm. you don't have an eight-year investment horizon, um, you know, uh, then you may look at it. But you need to be comfortable with the fact that it clearly is extra risk mm. as compared to other places, even though there are players who've come in which are sort of government-backed um, you know, companies. But, yeah. but I still think you need to be comfortable with the risk. Fair enough. I think we've put all the options on the table. Now it's uh, for uh, each to decide which one suits them. Vishal, this has been a very, very helpful conversation. Thank you so much for joining in. It's a pleasure. And uh, you know, shining some more uh, light and sparkle on gold and how we should assimilate it in our portfolios. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. All right. Hope you found this conversation useful. Keep sending us your feedback, comments and queries and of course more questions because what you ask is what we answer on this show. It's a wrap on this edition. Thanks very much for being with us. See you again next week. Let's talk money.